I often find myself imagining a world that was different. What if we all lived in harmony? What if there was no hunger, food shortage? What if we weren't making such an impact on global climate change? And what if social care reform, NHS crisis, weren't in the headlines? But when I think of these things, I get so overwhelmed because they're so large. How can I make an impact on national and international issues? With this in mind, in a sequence of events a few years ago, my mindset changed. After making a decision to go and live and work in New Zealand, we drove to a small town on the East Coast. We had no friends over there, we had no job, we just had myself, my wife, a hire car and a small tent. But through a friend of a friend, we got connected to a family who just took us under their wings. The very first day we met them, we were invited for lunch. Following that, we had many days of great tasting coffees, great conversations, and within a week, we were completely plugged into a community. There was no need for anyone to do this. And in one sense, it all seemed so small. But this became the point. The fact that they decided to take these small actions drastically changed our experience in New Zealand, but also my outlook on life and the impact I could make in this world. I didn't have to get overwhelmed by the large things and the big things, but how my small daily decisions impact me and also impact those around me. With this in mind, and also other research that had pointed me to the fact that small things have big impact. The environmental theory of the butterfly effect. Can a, can a tornado really be caused by the flapping of a butterfly's wings across the other side of the world? Or in the context of a business decision, a pallet driver's de um, decision to pick up an extra pallet on his run seems rather meaningless and small in that local context. But in the global context of the business, the knock-on effect of rescheduling, further space, and another delivery has significant impacts on the finances and operations of that business. Therefore, a global impact to that small local decision. With this in mind, a group of friends and I got together to dream up an idea. How could we change the world? Inspired by the Steve Jobs quote, the troublemakers, the misfits, the square pegs, the ones who think they can change the world, the ones who do things differently are often the ones who do. And these words resonated with me. Could I really make a difference? I was also inspired by history. What if Martin Luther King had never had a dream? Would civil rights be the same today? Or Thomas Edison's persistence at making a long-lasting, commercially viable light bulb, to name a few? What about us? What was our idea? Why not open a coffee shop? We were going to change the world with a coffee shop. Really? But our experience in New Zealand, observations in social trends, and my faith really made me think that I was desperate for community. We were desperate for community. And society was desperate for community. And after many years, it was time to bring the London coffee scene to Wales. Celebrating local ingredients, geeking out on every espresso that was poured. We were passionate for the small details, the small things with a big impact, because we really believed this would be what made our business a success, but also the impact of our customers and those we wanted to support. The fact that every single cup of coffee that was, is weighed within our shop basically meant that we, we th really thought that we would get more customers because they had consistency with their coffee, which had an impact on more income, which would have an impact on more jobs, which have an impact on our city, but also the fact that we'd be able to make, generate more money to give away to those people we needed. Our vision grew because I really wanted to taste good coffee. But also, I had friends who worked with the homeless in Swansea, and I could see how small donations made a big impact in their work. I had friends who worked on the streets of Kenya, rescuing street children, and small donations went a long way. Therefore, why not use our profits? Why not our business make an impact for them? Therefore, our business started. 
Let's really be passionate about the small things. Let's geek out on the small things. Let's see how these small things make a big impact in our business, but in a global context. And I just wanted to share two principles that have become a driving force behind what we do in the PEG. Firstly, think global. What does every decision I have have on a global, in a global context? I don't always mean in a geographical, but in the, in the context of my local and my larger decision. For example, if my daughter had her way, we'd eat ice cream every single day of the year. It would be an absolute pleasure and a delight to experience that. However, I'm fairly sure the, the knock-on effect and the cumulative impact of having ice cream every day would be rather detrimental to my health and also to hers. Therefore, a global mindset to a local decision. Also, what if I decided to only buy from large chains with great discounts on imported food? That local decision Im impacts me and my immediate finances, but the global context has a detrimental impact for local producers, local suppliers, and, and local economy. Therefore, a real negative impact eventually on my area where I live and my economy. And in the context of our business, how do those small decisions of someone's looking out for someone's well-being or supporting a local supplier really have an impact? Imagine the multiple impact of multiple businesses, multiple individuals having this mentality. It's not just about me, myself, and I. Secondly, as crazy as it seems, I really believe you'll never meet anyone who shouldn't be loved. Despite the pain and the headlines we see around us, I would love to imagine a world that was different. Research often points us to the, the fact that a disconnect or a frustration or an extreme behavior in someone is often a result of a feeling of unlove, a disconnect, or a rejection in society. Research also points us to the fact that despite food and water, humans' greatest needs are to be loved, accepted, and in relationship, and to be esteemed. Therefore, what if we had a mentality of family? How would that impact society? And how would we do that in our business? We don't have customers or clients in the peg. We have friends. We don't have a staff workforce. We have a staff family. We don't just ask your name when you take an order. We genuinely care about who you are and how you're doing. We want to see the best in people. We want to see each and every person in society as a family member. We have a passion for family, relationship, and attention to detail. And this is a driving force behind what we do. We care about people, and we care about the supply chain. Every single cup of coffee is thought of in a global context. Every single cup of coffee is thought with a loving mentality. Because every single cup of coffee has beans that are sourced ethically that support the region they are grown in. That has local milk that supports the local su um, economy that has compostable materials in the takeaway cups in order to reduce our environmental footprint. And any profit that is left is given to those who need, need it greater than ourselves, either in the streets of Swansea or the streets of Kenya. Can we really make an impact on those small decisions? Also, the care for people. I'll never forget a story of one of our regulars who came in for a, a slice of cake and a cup of tea. She was having a really tough time, and, and the baristas at the time just asked her, how are you doing? And genuinely cared about this lady. Anyway, from one visit to another visit to several days later and many, many more visits, we, got to, we found out that this lady had had a tragic loss in her family, and it had completely crushed her. And through love and acceptance, through conversations, and through other customers buying her tea and cake, we were able to walk with this lady on a journey of recovery, of restoration, and she found a place to belong and feel esteemed and supported. Not only that, our shop simply started by the love and support of people in Swansea. We had an idea and a penny in our pocket. I didn't have any friends in London with big bank accounts. I didn't have a big capital fund I could access. 
We simply started through crowdfunding, free builders, free designers, free furniture, free marketing, free pretty much everything, because people loved us. People wanted to see our idea prosper, their city prosper, but also those we wanted to impact prosper. What if we looked out for our neighbors in the same way? What if we had the mindset of family in our neighborhood? Would this, in turn, have a positive impact on the financial pressure of the social care system because people felt loved, supported, esteemed? What if giving someone a second chance in life who is really finding life challenging, in turn, really impacts their life for the positive and also those around them? What could be if we went that step further? If I was to make a positive impact in someone's life today and for the next 33 years, and in turn they made a positive impact in another person and another person and so on and so on, within 33 years this whole planet could be reached with that seed that I've planted today. Could this world be different? So why not be the square pegs? Why not be the troublemakers, the misfits, the ones who think they can change the world? Because I genuinely believe the reality is we can. Our small, daily, local decisions do have large consequences on a global scale. And a small decision to simply love someone, make them feel accepted and esteemed, I really do believe can change their mindset and their lifestyle. Let's not write off this planet just yet. Let's all start making small decisions and actions. And let's see what happens.